This video will cover the topic inverse functions, linear, discrete. Let's say we have a one-to-one -one function called f of x. Then it has an inverse function written as f inverse of x. A one-to-one -one function is a function that has a unique y value for every x value. In these functions, x is mapped out to y. In the inverse function, y is mapped out to x. Therefore, in a certain function, if there exists a point such as 3, 4, then the inverse point is 4, 3. A more precise way to write this definition is f inverse of y equals x, if and only if y equals f of x. Let's now work on an example problem to understand this better. The one-to-one -one functions g and h are defined as follows. g equals the set negative 2 comma 5, 2 comma negative 5, 5 comma 6, 7 comma 9, and 9 comma 1. And h of x equals 3x plus 8. So we need to find the following. g inverse of 5 equals what? And we need to find h inverse of x as a function. And then we need to find h of h inverse of 5. We'll start out with g inverse of 5. And the first thing we want to do is write g inverse. And to do this, we'll write the inverse points of g. From the principles of inverse functions that we discussed, can you write g inverse? I guess all the points are supposed to be flipped. So that would mean that g inverse equals 5, negative 2, negative 5, 2, 6, 5, 9, 7, and 1, 9. Yes, you are right. Now to find g inverse of 5. Look at g inverse and find the point with 5 as an x value. It's the very first one, so g inverse of 5 equals negative 2. Good job! For the second part, we have to find h inverse of x. For inverse points, we flip the x and y values. To find an inverse function, we do the same thing. We flip x and y and then solve for y. What exactly do you mean? I'm still a little confused. First of all, let's begin with our function h of x equals 3x plus 8. h of x is y, so we can replace h of x with y equals 3x plus 8. Then we swap y and x in the equation, which is what I mean when I say that we can flip the x and y. So it's now written as x equals 3y plus 8. Solve this equation for y, and you have your inverse. I think that is something that you can do. The first thing I would do is subtract 8 on both sides. Then I have x minus 8 equals 3y. Then I would divide both sides by 3 to get y alone. The final answer is y equals x minus 8 over 3, right? Yes. There is one last step, though. You should replace y with h inverse of x. They are still both the same, but the formal answer is h inverse of x equals x minus 8 over 3. And then we can write this in here as well. x minus 8 over 3. This is the inverse function. There is now one last part. Find h of h inverse of 5. Interestingly, when we have h multiplied by its inverse, it is canceled out. So h of h inverse of 5 equals 5. We can confirm this by actually finding the value of h at h inverse of 5. We can rewrite the problem as h of h inverse of 5. That might make it more clear to see. We find h inverse of 5 first, and then we find h of that. So plug in 5 for x and the inverse function. So h inverse of 5 equals 5 minus 8 over 3. 5 minus 8 equals negative 3. That's divided by 3. And negative 3 over 3 simplifies to negative 1. Now we find h of negative 1. We plug this into the original h of x. So h of negative 1 equals 3 
times negative 1 plus 8. Well, negative 3 plus 8 equals 5. So as we can see, 5 is the answer. The input equals the output. We are now done with the problem. As a quick summary, what I got from inverse functions is that the x and y values switch places. Similarly, when we have a function and we need to write the inverse of it, we switch x and y and solve the new equation for y. However, only a one-to-one -one function has an inverse. So if the original function is not one-to-one, -one, then we can't find an inverse for it. Excellent work.